Welcome to an example on how to solve a linear first order differential equation using an integrating factor. The first step is to make sure the given differential equation is in the correct form, which is the form shown here, dy dt plus p of t times y equals f of t. So notice how the given equation is in the correct form. We have dy dt as y prime, then p of t times y is 4y, which means p of t is the constant 4, and then we have f of t, a function of t on the right side. So the next step is to find the integrating factor, which is equal to mu of t equals e, which is mu of t equals e raised to the power of the integral of p of t dt. So in this case, mu of t, the integrating factor is equal to e raised to the power of the integral of, again, p of t is equal to the constant four. So we have the integral of four dt, the integral of four with respect to t is just four t, which means the integrating factor is just e raised to the power of four t. We'll leave off the constant of integration when determining mu of t. So the next step, we multiply both sides of the differential equation by mu of t. So we'd have e raised to the power of four t. Let's go ahead and write y prime as dy dt, so times dy dt plus four times e to the power of four t times y equals e raised to the power of four t times three sine two t. Let's write that as three e to the four t sine two t. Now in this form, looking at step four, the left side is a derivative of the product of mu of t and y, which means this sum is equal to the derivative with respect to t of e raised to the power of four t times y. And we'll keep the right side the same for right now. And of course we can check this derivative by applying the product rule. We'd have the first function e to the power of four t times the derivative of y with respect to t, which is dy dt, plus the second function, which is y, times the derivative of e to the four t with respect to t, which is four e to the four t. Now our last step is to integrate both sides of this equation and solve for y. So we'd have the integral of the derivative with respect to t of e to the four t y dt equals, let's write the right side as three times the integral of e to the four t sine two t dt. And now let's integrate on the next slide. On the left side, the integral and derivative undo each other, and therefore we're just left with e raised to the power of four t times y. We would have a constant of integration, but we'll include that on the right with the constant from this integral here. So this is equal to, now to find this integral, we have to perform integration by parts. So we'll have three times, using integration by parts, we would let u be equal to sine two t, and differential v would be equal to e to the four t dt. So now we differentiate to find differential u, and we integrate to find v. So the derivative of sine two t would be equal to cosine two t times two, so differential u is equal to two cosine two t dt. Now to find v, we integrate e to the power of four t dt, which requires u substitution, where u would be equal to four t, differential u is equal to four dt, dividing both sides by four, we have one fourth du equals dt. So the integral would be equal to one fourth e to the four t. We would have plus c here, but we'll leave that off for later. So v is equal to one fourth e to the four t. So now applying integration by parts, this integral here is equal to uv, which would be one fourth e to the four t times sine two t. Minus the integral of v du. Well v du would give us one fourth e to the four t times two cosine two t dt. Well, one fourth times two is one half. So we'd have minus one half times the integral of e to the four t cosine two t dt. 
to keep things more organized, let's go and distribute the three. So we'd have three-fourths e to the four t sine two t, and then minus three-halves times the integral of e to the four t cosine two t dt. Now from here, we need to perform integration by parts again to evaluate this integral. So very similar to last time, now we'll let u be equal to cosine two t, and therefore differential v is equal to e to the four t dt. So differential u is equal to the derivative of cosine two t with respect to t times dt, which would be negative two sine two t dt. And then to find v, just like before, we integrate e to the four t dt, which would give us v equals one-fourth e to the four t. So we have three-fourths e to the four t sine two t, and then minus three-halves times u times v is one-fourth e to the four t cosine two t. And then we have minus the integral of v du, well v times du is going to be negative one-half e to the four t sine two t. So this becomes plus one-half e to the four t sine two t dt. And again, let's go ahead and distribute the three halves. So we have three-fourths e to the four t sine two t, and then we'll have minus three eighths e to the four t cosine two t, and then negative three halves times one half is negative three fourths, so we have minus three fourths times the integral of e to the four t sine two t dt. Now it seems like we're going in circles, but notice how this integral here is the same integral that we have here. So while the left side of this equation is e to the four t times y, it's also equal to three times this integral. So let's go ahead and write three times this integral here on the left. So we have three times the integral of e to the four t sine two t dt. So what we can do now is combine these integrals by adding three fourths times this integral to both sides of the equation. Well, three plus three fourths would be 12 fourths plus 3 fourths, or 15 fourths. So from this equation, we can conclude that 15 fourths times the integral of e to the 4t sine 2t dt is equal to 3 fourths e to the 4t sine 2t minus 3 eighths e to the 4t cosine 2t. Let's also include our constant of integration here on the right now, let's write plus c sub one. And now from here, if they can figure out what constant to multiply both sides of the equation by, so if the left side is equal to three times the integral of e to the four t sine two t dt, we'll then have the antiderivative for this integral. So we need to ask, what can we multiply 15 fourths by to get three? Well, 15 fourths times x must equal three. Let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which would be four fifteenths. Simplifying, we get x equals, simplifying here we get one, three, and three, and five threes and fifteen, so x equals four fifths. So if we multiply both sides of this equation by four fifths, we'll have three times this integral on the left. So we're going to multiply all of this by four-fifths and all of this by four-fifths as well. Well, again, we already know four-fifths times fifteen-fourths is three, so now we know three times the integral of e to the four t sine two t dt equals, well, four-fifths times three-fourths is equal to three-fifths, so we have three-fifths e to the four t sine two t minus 
4 fifths times 3 eighths is 12 fortieths, which simplifies to 3 tenths. So we have minus 3 tenths e to the 4t cosine 2t, and then let's let 4 fifths times t sub 1 be equal to c, so we have plus c. And now from here, because we have 3 times the integral of e to the 4t sine 2t dt on the left, which we also know is equal to e to the 4t times y, we have what we need, we now know e to the 4t times y equals this right side. So for our last step, we want to divide both sides of the equation by e raised to the power of 4t. Let's do this on the next slide. So simplifying, we get y or y of t equals 3 fifths sine 2t minus 3 tenths cosine 2t. And let's write this last term as plus c times e raised to the power of negative 4t. This should be the general solution to the given differential equation. I hope you found this helpful.